so when you open up all this this is the screen that you get to see right uh, you have the uh, this is the the exact user interface in which you have different sections so firstly uh, this is how these sections looks like you can see it right yeah okay so on the top side when you where you have all the tools right this is known as the tool palette so in case if you need to make an automation of a macro or a analytical application or a workflow uh, you know simple workflow you need to choose the tools based on their functionality uh, from the tool palette now in all tricks there are approximately you know 200 to 300 plus tools that are available however they are logically grouped under different sections so if you see here if you see here in and out right so all the tools that are you know uh, corresponds to the input like reading the data or pushing the data to a database odbc or an excel file or a csv file or, or an application all are available here right when you go to preparation so if you need to do you know simple excel operations like you know creating a formula doing some data cleansing filtering some you know uh, values in a particular column uh, doing some you know uh, imputation like average and so on creating a record id or you know deselecting and or deleting certain columns from the data all those kind of activities are done from the tools that are present in the preparation right now when we go to join the join are basically you know when you have to analyze multiple data sets say you have to do a lookup right in excel we always do a v lookup right to fetch value from a different sheet corresponds to, uh, corresponding to a common value so things like that when you need to do you have to use the join tool or the join multiple when you need to append data in a union tool and so on and so forth so based on the you know logical operationalize the operate operational activities of the tools they're grouped under different sections in the tool palette right any questions on this tool palette no uh, i mean once we started using it so we'll, we'll get to know yeah, of course we'll, we'll, we'll do a deep dive of course we'll do a, do a deep dive on the tools but just to explain the interface here right next the big chunk of white space that you see is where you develop the workflow so this is known as the canvas so as we you know we all use white canvases to draw pictures this is the white canvas that altrix provides you to create the workflow so you know you drag and drop a tool in the canvas then you go and drag say you know another tool that you need right and then you link it with one another and so on and so forth right now each of these tools right when you click on say input tool if you see the left hand side of it shows up in a certain manner if i click on the filter tool the left side shows up in a certain manner so this left side of the uh, user interface which is known as the configurational panel it helps you to configure each and every tool that you use in the workflow right so when you create a workflow what you do is you simply drag and drop a tool from the tool palette from whichever group you and then you go ahead and configure that tool and again then you move on to the next tool you link it then you configure the second tool then you link it you configure the third tool and so on so forth and then finally you take the output in a certain file or a physical file or an odbc all right so all this configuration that you need to do for this applications are available on the configuration panel right and since each uni each tool is has a you know unique operation to perform the configuration panel will also change for each and every tool why are you calling this as a tool so this you know this tool like you know altris in itself is a tool within that mm -hmm. it's we mm -hmm. you know mostly we call altris as a software within which we have certain tools like input data output data text input so on so forth which helps us to create the data pipeline oh. right so that's why the whole thing is called as tool palette and the individual components are known as tools right and each of these tools can be configured in the configuration panel on the left hand side okay, okay. so three sides we have covered till now the tool palette where all the tools are there the canvas where you create the workflows or the, or the data pipelines 
the left hand side is the configuration panel where we configure each and every tool in a certain manner to uh, meet the objective of the workflow and then on the on the right hand side below right just below the canvas you have the result window when you run and configure a window the results for each output of the tool can be seen in this configuration in this result panel right so that's how the uh, you know the different components of the user user interface looks like all right no. any question on the user interface no no i'm good only yeah. question is uh this favorites and recommendation is our our thing right so this will those will come uh based on what we are working and input yeah, output so and join path transformation yeah. in database reporting so all those are tools which you want to perform the operations on top of the data correct correct and based on how frequently you use a tool it will get popularized in your you know in the favorites or recommended and so on got it got it got it what is this yeah. computer vision or text mining? Yeah, so this one are basically for the you know the advanced analytics ones. Like if you start from machine learning, uh, text mining. Uh, like if you want to create a word cloud or search something, sentiment analysis. Those can be done using these particular tools and then computer vision, right? But please, you know, uh, keep in mind that machine learning, text mining, and computer version are not part of the normal license licensing that always gives so if you see here you know this is just for your team purpose i am just explaining this one so you will have see i have two licenses right one is the alfrix designer which is the standard alfrix operational uh, license that you get wherein you won't get access to machine learning text mining and computer vision and other advanced ones for this, you need to buy another license, which is the Altrix Intelligence Suit, right? Now, Altrix Intelligence Suit will enable all the advanced analytics applications that are available in Altrix. Okay, so this is a separate license that you get for advanced analytics. No. Okay. Cool. Now, you know, I will slightly uh, Throw some lights on the advantages of Altrix and you know why Altrix has been used so uh, vigorously in the in the analytics industry of late, right? See, when we talk about something uh, like an ETL, right, where we essentially extract the data, transform the data in using any particular you know application which was previously like an SSIS or a SQL, right? And then what we do is we go and push that data to a reporting database from where we create the dashboards and everything for the visual interpretation of the data right now what Altrix did is you know all those coding uh, you know that was required as a part of the transformation of data they converted that into a drag and drop interface right say for example if you need to filter a data right you have to write a select clause and then you have to put a where condition to it and then write it right here you just need to you know bring the drag and drop the filter tool from the tool palette and just mention the column name and then just mention the value that you want to filter or unfilter right in the in the business in the business front right people who are not so technical maybe the finance team right they will have the the accounting uh, minds right they won't have those technical expertise or the or the say the audit teams right they were not that much of they did not have that much of technical expertise so for them this adaptability of this tool to perform the same functions like how and what an excel does or a sql does just by using the drag and drop options became very popular and become very easy to learn and develop and uh, you know deliver right so that is where the all tricks you know came into picture along with that when it comes to data processing Altrix fairly has a faster computing uh, speed compared to SQL or like the, the Microsoft SQL servers. And also, uh, you know, it has a host of connections that are readily available or data connectors that are readily available for integrating Altrix with your applications like a Salesforce or a SAP or a Oracle or a JD Edward or any accounting system or reporting system that your organization might have. All right. Uh, so this is, you know, uh, given that the inbuilt uh, connectors that were present for Altrix, given that 
the ease of learning this tool and working with this tool and also given that the host of you know diversified uh, tools that this particular application had right so in sql you cannot do a uh, say something like a text mining or something like a predictive analytics right so in all trees under one single umbrella you can do normal transformation you can connect with multiple data sources you can perform advanced analytics you can perform certain level of reporting like you know not interactive reports as power bi or tableau but still fair amount of reporting bar graphs you know uh, graphical representation can be put in and then of course you can you know dump the data to multiple odbcs that are available in the world so given all these features coming across in under one single umbrella altris became the go to tool for most of the analytics industry all right so this is a short background of why altris has been new you know been so popular of late all right now coming to the next piece of it and i will quickly take you through the the training timelines that we have so basically this training that we you know do uh, is on a weekend basis so i have just marked it on the weekend like weekend 1 weekend 2 3 and 4 right but uh, we'll follow the same uh, flow of content but maybe the timelines might be a bit different so we'll first start off with the introduction of all trees that we have already do work through of the on on the basics of data transformation right uh, of course you have a sql background so you might be aware of it but i will just still touch base on this a bit then we'll introduce uh, the first 10 all tricks tools right and then followed by an assignment which are you know using those 10 tools that you learn right uh followed by you know once these 10 tools are done uh we'll of course have a doubt clearing session the assignment discussion then we'll go with another 10 tools and like, of course followed by an assignment and again a doubt clearing session and then followed by the next five tools right so on in total we'll you know cover around 25 tools and once we cover this 25 tools i will give you a project which is again you know uh, a, a a very detailed uh, one which will help you to understand and practically implement the uh, tools that you have learned and then of course for a doubt clearing session and a guidance uh, for certification right now as you said right your your core uh, objective would be not only to learn all three but also to clear, you know clear the certification program right so i have few of the uh, insights uh, from the core certification program uh, of course i will share this with you also for your knowledge so you know if i see the core certification program right it it does not cover each and every tool of the tool uh, of the altris application it will only cover around 20 to 25 of the applications among which 13% would be mostly on the general designer knowledge like which what is the tool palette if i need to configure a tool where do you go tool palette canvas configuration panel or result window something like this the questions would be there then 36% weightage is given on the data preparation followed by data blend and data parse 26% and transformation of data 25% right and again a break up of this 13 36 26 and 25% has been given like what are the areas that uh, you know uh, you need to focus on and of course the training that we have will also focus on particularly on this area so that you are also well equipped to you know uh, go for the certification program all right any any yeah. question on the program uh, no no question so see the tools that i have listed here the ones which we would need to focus for the certification piece right along with this i have certain cheat sheets certain guidance documents in pdf formats uh, which i would share with you okay so first tool that we want to you know discuss is the input data right so let's go back to the all tricks yeah i have a question um yeah now ta tableau also it has its own uh, data preparation tool which is tableau prep yeah right right mm. it uh, we can build many data but i mean i'm i'm certified in tableau so that's why i know what tableau can do the only reason i'm using i'm trying to learn altrix is someone in the management they want to know what is altrix that's the, that's why i'm i'm there but all these things i can do in tableau prep 
Correct, but then uh, the problem with Tableau Prep is, you know, limitation in terms of users with other applications and tools, right? So what happens is whatever you do on Tableau Prep, the final uh, transform data goes into Tableau only, right? And then you start creating the dashboards, right? Now, whatever transformation you do or whatever, you know, standalone reports you prepare, Tableau Prep, correct me if I'm wrong, does not push it to an ODBC to get it stored somewhere. Does it do that? Yeah, it can It can push it to the table. If you want a, a physical table in Snowflake or a Teradata, or, uh, yeah, you can push it to the table. But, but then again, uh, you know, in terms of certain applications like advanced analytics, the AI ML models that you create, or the spatial analysis that you do, right? those are far more optimized and easy to do in tableau right and also few of those aiml model or the ab testing or the you know random forest models are not available in in tableau prep right so yeah, that's why maybe, you know maybe yeah so that is where maybe it, those are not available but uh, um, these flows are available i don't know why these guys are so much interested in getting to know all this but uh, anyway and, um, See, if your if your organization has a tech stack where the dashboarding is done only in Tableau, right? No other ClickSense, ClickView, Power BI is there. Only Tableau is there as a tech stack. Then it does make sense to have Tableau Prep with you, right? But again, tomorrow if you you know if you completely change to a Microsoft stack or maybe you have Power BI, which is more more cost effective, right? Then uh or any other click sensor click view then all tricks make sense right to have a standalone etl platform which will do your data transformation and then whatever you know you have click sense click view power bi tableau whatever data visualization layer you have you can use that so that way you know of course you you can you know do it right but again you know all tricks is something you know i know i am an all tricks trainer but uh I, I should always, I will still say this, all this is something that would stay for another three to four years, right? After that is going to be Databricks. Databricks is the next big next next big thing that is happening in the ETL world, right? Most of the organization will have Microsoft stack and then Databricks, Azure and Power BI or Tableau would be the, um, you know, uh, ETL or, you know, tech stack that analytics teams would be using it. Got it yeah cool uh so coming to the first tool that we're gonna cover is the in and uh, in the input data tool right so it's it present in the in and out section of the tool palette so this is the input data right you can just drag and drop this tool right and the configuration panel opens up okay now you if you need to connect it to a data set the first thing that you need to do is click on set up a connection now, when you click on this set up a connection, it will open up a host of connections. So if your organization has an Adobe Analytics platform or Amazon Athena or a Redshift or, you know, Azure SQL database, whatever, you know, these are all the pre-installed connectors that you already have, right? Uh, the Google BigQuery, Salesforce, SAP HANA and so on and so forth, right? So whatever uh, connection, connector you want to choose, just click on quick connect, give the credentials and make sure the firewalls are open for the Altrix port to interact with these applications and then you can easily fetch data from this, all right? For the time being, maybe, you know, I would go with a physical file or an Excel file. Uh, so what we can do is we can click on files, then we can go to... Okay, so I have this data file here now, right? It's just a physical file I'm importing. I will click on the file, then click on open. Now your file might have you know multiple sheets in them so you can go ahead and select any one of the sheets that you want say maybe the order sheet you want to import right and then click on ok now once you click on ok on the right left hand side you will see a preview of the data set please note this is the data preview it's not loaded in the tool uh, till now okay it's just giving you a preview to do some understanding of the data set like what are the columns present so on so forth right and then once this is done you just click on the run button when you click on the run button then the tool starts importing the data and once it's done if you if i was talking of the result window if you remember 
this is where the entire data set shows up now when i say entire data set if you see it's only like you know uh, 4317 uh, rows out of 51000 rows are being displayed here now this is a question that comes in the certification right like you know there are uh, what is the capacity of each of this terminal to hold data what is the holding capacity so this tool has imported the entire data set but each of the uh, terminals the output terminals of the tool can only show a preview of 1 mb of data now if your 1 mb if your data set has multiple you know columns like 100 300 columns then maybe you know 300 or 400 record would show up if your column has lesser columns then more rows will show up right because at the end of the day these terminals will only give you data preview of 1 mb size not more than that okay but please uh, you know the the uh, confusion that people will have is does it only means that 4317 records were imported no it's not that your np just the preview is 1 mb of data just the preview okay now this is where you import the particular data set now any questions yeah you said uh, on left bottom it's a preview but on Correct. the center center bottom yeah. that's the result right that's that's the result but the entire result data set won't be shown up only the ah, partial I get it. result data i get it yeah i know it's basic sql right so when you write select chart you won't get all 1 million records it will show top 1000 records i get it but yeah. how come I the results are appearing without you running the script no i ran the script right i click on the run button oh you click on the run okay got it yeah yeah so if you see on the log in the result window you also get the log right so if you see started running at so and so date so and so time uh, then we finished running in 3.4 seconds using amp engine okay so now you are saying the data is loaded into input input tool yes exactly so okay yeah all right now here if you see on the configuration panel you also get to in the canvas i will discuss now you have something called layout orientation right annotations and connection progress now what is layout direction so now what we'll do is we will create this workflows like you know side by side right one after the other it will get connected and it will show up however if you want to create the workflow in a top down approach you can go ahead and select vertical layout right now it becomes all top to down approach right you connect to oh. next code here Okay. Right. So, depending on how you want to organize your workflow, you can go ahead and select the uh, the orientation. Okay. This is one thing. Next thing is annotation. Now, what happens is when now you have say one tool or five or ten or twenty tools, it it's okay to it's easy to understand what are you doing, what are each of the tool does, right? But a typical workflow, right? You know, maybe you know one of the workflows that I created had seventeen hundred tools, right? so that time what happens this small boxes right it becomes it makes the uh, you know the workflow very clumsy right so what you can do is this annotation you can do a height so it becomes more crystal clear you can of course do a logical grouping of the tools put some comments here and there i will show you how to put in comments as well and then you can you know create the workflow however if you want to show you can you know click on show or show with tool name now previously when you did show it will just show data dot xs excel uh, xlsx which is the file name and the sheet name now if you want to also highlight the tool name like what is this tool right you can always go ahead and click on show tool name so it will show you input data okay okay all right now connection progress connection progress is nothing but you know when the when the when the workflow runs like multiple tool will show like 30% 60% 70% 80% if you want to hide that you can hide if you want to show you can show or you can only show while running so that's how you can configure but generally we give it a show only so that it gives an idea of how yeah, much it has yeah that's what i was thinking people. because it's too much control for the user to do this thing right so we don't need that much control uh, hey show that's the progression yeah right so yeah 
All right. So now once you have this data, say, you know, the next thing that also, you know, I will just click on this one. So what will happen is if you are using an ODBC connection very frequently, it will get captured in the recent. So next time when you use a similar ODBC, you don't need to go to data source and find it here and there. You just go to the recent one. You will have those listed. And if you can click on them, it will get connected. Okay. This yeah. is one thing. Now, this is all about the input tool, which helps you to extract the data from the applications into your analyt into your Altris platform. What if, if I have uh, four different inputs? Okay. No problem. So this is, say, an Excel file input, right? The next mm -hmm. one, uh, say, maybe you have a database, right? So maybe I would go to data source, maybe Microsoft SQL Server. I think I have a database connection. As many as okay. as many inputs you want to bring in, you can bring in. You just need to drag and drop those many number of input tools and keep on configuring them for the data for your data sources. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and bring one more Excel for me? Yeah, sure. So this is the file. What I will do is I will go ahead. Uh, maybe I will bring this same file, but I will bring another sheet re return tab. All right. So the first data set is of the orders, and then it and the next data set that I'm bringing in shows which are the orders that got returned. Okay. So then yeah. this is the second data set that we have. Now, if I run this, you see the percentage showing up here. All right. It's done. Now, if you click on this particular one, you get to see the inputs uh the previous input uh, that we got in right if you click the next one the the output changes so it's, it's just like running two select queries parallelly right? so uh, on your left there is a middle section right <clears throat> options yeah yeah mm -hmm. those are more useful in uh, when I'm using Snowflake or any any database or uh, yeah, like, so I these are you know see, these are you know few of them you can of course use but mostly it's for the Snowflake where you need to mention the table the API name and so on and so forth right say for example you have a disordered data right it's a big data fifty one thousand but you only need to or you only want say uh, top hundred in a SQL language, right? So what you will do is in record limit, you come in and write 100, okay? And you run this. See, you only have no 100 records fetched in from the source in all tricks, okay? The other one is, uh, say now you have selected the uh, order tab in the Excel file, right? Say you want to change it to something else. Of course, you can go ahead and choose that, say area manager. Let's do that area manager thing. Okay. Now let's run it. See, you have the area managers. You will have only 13 records. You had a top 100 given, but your table has only 13 records. Only 13 records yeah. will come up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Next, the important thing that we you know often use in terms to uh, deal with certain type of data is the start data import online. Now I will change something here in the file. Often what happened, there are two things that will happen. First, there is no header in the data set. Okay. Straight away, the column values are starting off. Now, if I... Yeah, so I'm in the Excel file, but I said I will change, I will move these headers. I will straight away have the uh, names and the uh, regions of these area managers. Okay. Got it. Now, when I run this in all tricks, if you see, the first record becomes my header, which is wrong. Yeah. So for that, what you need to do is, you need to click on first row contain data 
okay so then it will say okay i will not make the first row as header i will rename it as say column one column two and column three so, uh, like that oh okay. it will automatically yeah see okay no. it, it made it field one field two field three and so on yeah okay now the second scenario that you might face is you have say data here say name region but on top of it you might have a data description this file was right something like this it is typically a junk line for me okay. so what i will do is i will close it now if i read if i read that data as is you see you get something like this the file was updated becomes your uh, the first uh, column header f2 becomes your second column header then you have certain nulls then the actual column header comes as a row value so it's all messed up here right so what you will do is we'll say the first row contain data no it does not but start data on input number so here we'll say start data import on line number five this is my data here now i will run it see now it knows okay data should be imported from line number five and the first row does not contain data so it has to be the header so the row number four becomes my header and from row number five it becomes my first record okay so since you are teaching me this why don't you go back huh? to your excel i have a question for you sure yeah in here right so put put the put on c5 put country just put country on c5 okay c5 c5 yeah c5 yeah yeah on uh, c6 put us mm -hmm. on c17 put canada okay okay now the Last file one. which I get is like this, right? So from C5 to C C16, it's US. But I don't want mm. to do any um, uh, functions on Excel. I want to take the take care of this in in Alpha. You can do this using the multi-row tool. It cannot be done in the input tool, but there is a tool uh, called multi-row. I will just show you as that as well. No, that's okay. We can we can cover when it comes in. But yeah, this is one of the use case I have. Yeah, this is called and known as flash fill. So of course, you know, till it meets a new value, it will repeat the row minus one at value. Yeah. So it yeah. can. And also, and also, can you insert one thing between uh, uh, sixteen and seventeen? Can you insert a row? Okay. Mm hmm. And put a uh, total on uh, A17. Yeah. What should I put in? So just put total. 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 Okay. B17 20. C17 30. As a number. Okay. Yeah. Now. The line number 17 is a junk line for me. I don't want it in my data because I will do the uh, operations later. But these guys are giving me this. Can this be taken care? Yes, it can be taken care. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. So we can we can go we can go on uh, when it comes in. But uh, that's uh, these yeah, are the so two I think use this cases. Will I have. Yeah, no worries. So this is the next tool that I was going to cover. We'll have this thing, right? So okay. what we'll do is what we'll do 
I have fifty percent of the data in Snowflake. Okay. Okay. Fifty percent is coming from Excel. Okay. Okay. What I am doing right now is I'm uploading the fifty percent data. I'm downloading from a uh, a a tool, some some web tool, and uploading those into tables. The Excel files into tables into Snowflake, so that I can run the SQL operations in Snowflake. Mm -hmm. Why don't I bring SQL. Snowflake data into Altrex, and why don't I bring Excel data into Altrex and run the PL within Altrex? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, once I do that, Because, and the output mm -hmm. will be, I just want, uh, I have output, right? Once the output I have. I want to do the pivots on top of the output. You want to do what on the output? Pivots. Pivots. Yeah, yeah. You can do pivots in here also. In in all the software, you can yeah. do that. On the final output. Yeah, that. You can create as many pivots as you wish. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's my use case. So that's what I'm try trying to solve in Azure. So I have Snowflake. I have Excel. I want to bring those into Altrix and do the EDL. And uh, run the output. On the output, I want to do some pivots. That's it. Yeah, it can be done. Okay. I mean, if you yeah. if you have Sounds your Snowflake, oh, if you have your Snowflake connection done on your system, you can share screen. I can show you how you how you can do it. Yeah, I know we are on time, but uh, anything else? Uh... No, I think it's good for today. I think you are able to understand. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.